connected. Okay. Hang tight. Let's get your intro going for real this time. Okay. You've now tuned in to the Drawing Board Podcast, a powerful, thought-provoking discussion where we talk about family, relationships, ministry, community, and career. Let's see what exciting guests we have on our show today. Great evening, everyone. This is Andre Ebron, the founder and the host of the Drawing Board Podcast. Uh, like every single, every single Tuesday, we come to you with the heat, with the fire, with all of the, uh, you know, pizzazz and excitement of such qualified, educated, interesting, um, phenomenal, extraordinary. <laughs> uh, that is the quality of the guest that I put before you. And today is no different. I want you to help me welcome Drawing Board Nation, Angelita, the Coach Thomas. Welcome Yay! to the show. Thank oh, wait, you. No, <laughs> all right. All right. Welcome to the show. Welcome Thank to the you. show. So it is great to have you on. I know. It's weird on this side, but it's great to be on. Thank you for having me. Yeah, not a problem. We just were kicking it before we went on air. It's about a lot of different things, mm -hmm. but let me let the people know exactly who you are. Uh, what many would consider nature of being, Angelita Thomas is also known as Angelita the Coach. She used her gifts and turned it into purpose. From her personal experience, along with knowing firsthand what it is like to be an entrepreneur due to her family history, she has made it her life's purpose to assist others in doing the same. Through a supportive, structured process, she not only positions clients to be a fruit to a fruitful life, but she teaches them how to step out of their comfort zone, network, and become successful entrepreneurs. Wait a minute. Before I unpack all of that, <laughs> let's talk about this comfort zone, right? <laughs> so I, I feel like I'm in a zone now. Those words lit up to me, right? So let's talk about that, Angelita. When you became an entrepreneur, like what were you doing before that? Like what made you step out of that comfort zone? Oh, you know what? I just think the fact that I just I wanted to do what I wanted to do. Okay. And I felt like being an entrepreneur, I can do what I wanted to do. Um, so that that was the start of me stepping out of my comfort zone. But trust me, I stayed in my comfort zone even after I became an entrepreneur. I stayed in my comfort zone for a lot of years. Okay. So, yeah, it, it took time. It took time for me to fully. And I'm still in my comfort zone a little bit, but definitely out there more than what I was. Okay. So sometimes, wait a minute, because this answers the question, right? You see all of these posts, motivational posts, and it's exciting. It motivates mm -hmm. you. It inspires you. But sometimes it's, it may not be a leap of faith. Sometimes it might be a step of faith, right? Mm -hmm. So coming out of your comfort zone, it may not automatically, when people think of entrepreneurship, they think about quitting a job, leaping oh, directly. Oh, no, 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 no. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. they yeah. do. And so that is, it is um, sensationalized that way, right? Mm -hmm. People are applauded, you know, and giving the big thumbs up. And everybody else from the outside is like, oh, man, you took that leap of faith. You jumped out on entrepreneurship. And then they disappear when the bills are due. But no, let me. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, like, it's like I'm an entrepreneur. Uh, support my product. They're like, right. Let me get that discount. Right. Yeah. 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 You know, and so like, wait a minute. I told you I'm an entrepreneur. I'm starting a business. This is how I generate my income. Yeah. We've been knowing each other for years. You know, let me let me get it on the low. Right. So. Yeah. So, but no. Okay. But no, because right. I, I think a lot of the time, like people that know me know my personality. Okay. So you can't even come at me like that. <laughs> okay. So tell, so tell me about Angelita. Who, if I were to ask you this question, right? And let's just say you have three sentences. I have your bio here. So okay. of course that'll tell me about who, you know, what you've done. Uh, but if I had to ask you the question and I had to ask five of your friends the same question, right? <laughs> who is Angelita Thomas? Um... They would probably say um, authentic, okay. real, yeah. doesn't bite her tongue, uh, no filter, <laughs> a go-getter. Okay. Um, uh, passionate about anything that I'm doing. Um, definitely, if I'm your friend, I'm your friend. Loyal to a fault. Um, I think they would say all dope things about me. For okay. the most part, just don't make her mad because she got an attitude problem maybe. Yeah. 
<laughs> so that passion goes, it goes, it goes both ways, yes, right? Yes, so yes, yes. So it's fiery passion moving forward, deep connections. And then if that line is crossed, it's a lot of fire on that side oh, and passion yeah, too. Oh, sure. right? yeah, for sure. For sure. And I mean, sure. <laughs> I, I, think, I think that's good. So I heard someone say this, I, and I, I've i adopted it as a, a personal philosophy, right? So some people are looking for balance, right? Mm-hmm. So in entrepreneurship, you have to set your own schedule, mm-hmm. even though you can do what you want to do mm-hmm. in order to be profitable or sustain your life there has to, as you say here, a structured process. Mm-hmm. Uh, it has to be supportive. You have to have all of that. Um, I heard that it's not about balance. And I would challenge you, to, what do you think about this? It's not about balance, but it's about keeping a healthy tension between your present circumstances and your future goals. Um. Well, I think it is about balance. And the reason why I say that I think it is about balance is because, granted, you are an entrepreneur, you have your own business, but um, some of us, and I still do work a nine to five um, with being an entrepreneur, plus being a mom and so many different things. So, you know, there is a level of balance that you have to have first and foremost, you okay. know, when it comes to those those things. Um, also, and at the same time is, you know, keeping your eye um, on what it is that you want to do. You have to always stay. You have to also be consistent. So mm-hmm. on the outside looking in, you're like, oh, yeah, I want to be an entrepreneur. Oh, you start my own business. You know, this is going to be great. It's not what you think it is. It's a lot of hard work. And it ha- you have to have balance and you have to have consistency in it. Because, um, you know, that first no you get, you know, like you can't, you can't let those things weigh you down. So, you know, it, it goes. You need all of that. Oh, great. So here's another question that I have for you. Okay. When we're talking about your comfort zone, mm-hmm. I would ask, what are you waiting on? Meaning what? Meaning, as we talk about entrepreneurship, full-time, 100%, if I were to ask you. What am I waiting what on? What are you waiting on? Because ah. you said you're still in your comfort I, zone. I am. So I am. I, I, am. Guess so, so, I am. So that prompted the question, what are you waiting ah, on? You know, I don't have an answer. So let's let's. I per, don't have an answer. I don't. Let's yeah. think about it. All right. Hmm. So you one hundred percent entrepreneurship, every day, living, breathing, working your purpose, passion. You know, and not saying what you're doing now doesn't, mm-hmm. in some way, like mm-hmm. continue to develop those skills needed for that. But let's let's unpack that. What does that look like? You wake up in the morning. What does Angelita do? <laughs> Mad because she has to get up. <laughs> okay. Because I feel like I just went to sleep. So, you know, it's like, ah. But it's, you know, it's get up. And obviously, you know, I, I pray because I, I like to, you know, anytime that every every day you wake up is a gift. So, you know, that's first, you know. But I plant my feet on the ground and I try to, you know, just be positive. Like, hey, we're going to have a good day because I know what my day looks like. My day looks like going to the 9 to 5 and doing everything that I have to do there. Then once I leave the 9 to 5, um, it's okay. Now we got to do everything for Angelita, the coach, you know? So the same energy that I put into my nine to five is the same energy that I put into, you know, being an entrepreneur. So, I mean, it just pretty much start my day. Once it starts, it doesn't stop to usually like 10 o'clock. Like I'm on the go for the most part all day. Okay. All day. All right. But my comfort zone and why I haven't jumped yeah, let's, off let's, into let's talk about it. Yes. entrepreneurship 100%. You know what? I really don't have a good answer. I'm not even going to lie and say, oh, it's because of this. I don't have a good answer. I think, again, a lot of it has to do with that comfort. Um, and... I haven't really sat down and say, okay, let me do my plan. Let me let me do my let me get my exit plan together. You know, so I think, you know, procrastination, which is you know fear, comfort zone. You right. know, so yeah, that that's what I have to do. I have to get my exit plan together because if I don't, then you know, three so years from now we're gonna be having the same, same conversation. conversation. Yes, yeah. yes. So you, if you watch the show, you know that I give every guest that I have a challenge, right? Oh, you're going to give me a challenge? I am going to give you a oh. challenge, but I'm going to give you three months, okay? Okay. I'm going to give you three months to fully develop your exit plan. Okay. Okay, so it is November now, beginning of November. Yes. So by the end of January, by the end of January, and I know it's a busy time, it's a busy time. Okay. But by the end of January, you should have a solid plan. That, and it can even be a 12-month exit mm-hmm. strategy where you would give yourself a year or however much time you need, but that you are 
uh, concretely and succinctly working your plan to live your passion. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about it. And it the says, thing of it is, I can't yeah. even get out of it, y'all, too, no. because I see him every <laughs> every other Tuesday. I see him every other Tuesday. That's right. So I can't even get out of it if I wanted to. Yeah, and I'm lo- and I, I'm not going to even say anything. I'm just going to look at her. Mm-hmm. Uh, How, how's that plan? How, right. What? Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> But look, it says you also, and I can attest to this, it says Angelita loves to connect with others. Uh, You attended uh, Macomb Community College for business management, entrepreneurship, and small business. And it has led you to be confident and diligent in your passion. So in addition to this, you also have over 16 years of experience in healthcare and the leadership position. Now, healthcare in this nation uh, is very interesting to me. Mm -hmm. Um, We are supposed to be, you know, a world power, right? And we have uh, so many different discrepancies as it relates to health care, uh, the Affordable Health Care Act, better known as Obamacare, mm-hmm. so many things being repealed, so many people being underserved, uh, access to health care, uh, especially as an educator, social worker, humanitarian. Like, I, I see these things. Like, how does it feel to be in that industry? What are, what are your thoughts? Um, I've been in the industry for so long, but in different aspects of it, if that makes sense. So, um, but for me, um, I don't know. Like I'm trying to, I'm trying to, to think, trying to find a good, a good way to answer the question. Um, I think our hair, our healthcare system is not the best. Okay. Um. I I don't really think that. I guess I've always said, why do we have to pay so much money for health care? Good question. That, like, that's, why yeah. do you know every you know if you have a job every year you have to you know apply for your benefits and there's always like an increase. Um. But why do we have to do that? You know, I think that because we're in the U.S., I think that health care benefit really should just be given to us. Honestly, I don't know. That's just my opinion. Yeah, I agree with that. And like so on one end, I'm like, hey, listen, as someone who, you know, is an advocate for people, mm-hmm. uh, I hate to see anybody like remain in a state of sickness because mm-hmm. they can't they afford can, yes. health care. Right. Or the health care that they can afford doesn't allow them the service to not just uh, not be sick, but to be well. Right. So there's the mm-hmm. difference. Right. And it, yeah. And I, I can say that I have definitely seen the difference as far as like based on what type of insurance you carry. Right. Um, is that depend that determines the level of care that you're going to receive. As bad as that sounds, I've seen that so many times. If you got Blue Cross Blue Shields or one of these high ones, you get the best service. If you got assistance from the state, no, you don't get good service. Yeah. You know, and that's unfortunate, but that is how you're treated, and I, I I've seen that. Now let me tell you, so um. To keep it light, but to also bring home this point. So my father-in-law, before he passed away, he needed something from the hospital, right? Mm -hmm. And I talked to this doctor, and he must have felt comfortable or whatever to talk to me. And I was saying, hey, man, there has to be, you know, course of treatment. What is is the long-term plan? What are we doing here? And I said, we want to go least invasive, figure out what's available. And when this doctor looked me in my face and said, there is something that could totally help your father-in-law right now. But his insurance won't pay for it. And it is thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars. And no, nobody, well, I won't say nobody, but the general public doesn't have thousands upon thousands Absolutely. for this one, uh, you know, one procedure or one thing that's going to help their family. And when I looked at him and realized that he, not he per se, but he representing the system, had a, uh, a cure or had something that could help my family, but because there was an issue of affordability, mm-hmm. uh, it prevented us from accessing it. Mm-hmm. And in that moment, I was I was livid. You know, I was livid. I, one, I appreciated him sharing the information. Mm-hmm. Two, of course, I know a lot of people are probably listening and saying, oh, there should be some type of legal action that, no, listen, let me help you out now. Uh, there are clauses structured all Absolutely. around that care that while you are emotional, and I know listening, some people are probably like, you know, feel a certain way. Mm -hmm. There are so many clauses that surround that, you know, that they've made it a way where if you cannot afford it, 
that they won't go under any type of, uh, you know, no legalities could mm-hmm. be placed in action that would cause them to be sued. So all of that to say, health care, we need some health care reform. Right, right. Yeah. I'll just say Magic Johnson. Okay, <laughs> all right. Yeah. Oh, for you sure. Know, I'm just yeah. <laughs> Magic Johnson, yeah. Yeah, I have a so. I'm not I'm not a conspiracy theorist, right? <laughs> but I have a I have a theory about that, okay? And I'm not saying this this is just me thinking out loud, guys. So don't mm-hmm. write me because I'm not, you know, but, <laughs> right. All right. All right. But here's the thing. So if right now someone who had a lot of notoriety, right? Let's just say, you know, chicken pox had made a resurgence like about a year or two mm-hmm. ago, right? I saw a lot of older people getting shingles and, you know, a lot of kids getting chicken pox. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, wow, this thing is coming back, you know, full full swing. And I was saying, what if someone who was completely, totally not affected by it, right, but no one had any way of determining this, and they said, hey, this person has chicken pox, right? And then they, they go through whatever, and it's like, oh, man, did he actually... You know, do you see where I'm going? No, did not he actually? Really. My I question, know, uh-uh. yeah, you can't follow me. Uh-uh. So my question was, like, did I wonder, like, did he actually, you know, have uh, HIV? Oh, because okay, I'm saying, yeah, I got you. Okay, at, yes, you know, at yes, that okay. time, at that time, HIV was like prevalent. It mm. was a huge disease, and you know, magic. It, it, brother, I'm not. Listen, your journey, what you may yeah. have gone through, but I had a question did, about the integrity, even, right, yeah, the integrity it, yeah. of the process, right? Yeah. Because it was like I saw other people who were being diagnosed around the same time and their journey was drastically different, right? Absolutely. And I could say that it was because of affordability and access to a cure. Just like I know right now over in, uh, I want to say it's Germany, there's Mm -hmm. some doctor who has like a cure that helps slow down MS. Mm. And I talked to a guy who sends his mother over there a couple times and they've been able to slow the process and the neurological, all these things. Uh, he has found a cure, right? right? Or he's found a, a method to, like, reverse some things. Mm-hmm. But I wondered, like, was this something to say, hey, listen, uh, there there's actually uh, a cure for this, and you just have to do this on your end, eat well, take this different. And I was I was just curious about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. beyond the healthcare care piece, uh, here's what I want to get to as well, because you have an awesome podcast called Real Talk with Angelita. So yes, talk yes, to me yes. about the podcast. What birthed the podcast? What made you want to start a podcast? So um, I did radio before um, before my podcast. I did radio for about a year and a half, two years. Okay. Uh, maybe maybe a little bit over. Um, and so, you know, as you grow, you just, you know, you develop like, hey, I want to do other things. You know, I want to do this. And so I was a co-host on the show. And, of course, you know, being a co-host um, – and in, in there, there was only certain things that I could do. And the show was only 30 minutes, too. So, oh, you know, wow. there okay. really wasn't too much, um, really too much wiggle room um, that I could, that, you know, we had for a 30-minute show. And so it was just, you know, I was changing business-wise. You know, things were moving in a different direction for me. So I actually decided to just say, okay, I'm going to leave the that particular, um, that particular show, which means that I would leave radio, you know, as well. Um, I enjoy radio and I learned so much actually, you know, being on the show behind the scenes and everything. Um, I just thought about it and I said, hmm, I wonder if I would be a good podcast host or I wonder if podcasting would be something for me, you know. So I thought about it, prayed on it a little bit. I got scared and said no then I said, okay, I'm going to do it. Then I got scared and said no again. Then I'm like, okay, I'm going to do it. So um, that's when Real Talk was birthed. And, you know, for me, my passion has always been business, entrepreneurship, um, always um, listening to people's story, how they got where they are um, as it pertains to their business. And so that is how the podcast was birthed. So, you know, we just talk about business, lifestyle, entertainment, um, and just – Kind of just be real with everything that we say. Um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> okay. Good, good. So now that we're talking about real talk, so on the drawing board, it is a it's a powerful, thought provoking conversation that challenges the listener to examine their life and reimagine the possibilities. Our topics: family, mm-hmm. relationships, ministry, community, and career. So let's talk about it. I know you said that you are a mommy. 
I am a mommy. Yeah, yes. So, so, so I'm a mommy of four. Okay. Um, 23, 22. 23? Yes, my oldest is you have. Are you old enough to have a 23-year-old? No, I'm not. <laughs> no. I, no. Yes, I, I'm I'm 41. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. I'm 41. Yeah. Um, so I have a 23-year-old, a 22-year-old, 15-year-old, and a 12-year-old, and a 2-year-old granddaughter. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. So grandma. Now, are you a glam mom? Or? No, just granny. Just She's, granny? Yeah. No, okay. None of that extraness. No. None of the extra? No. Okay. Mm-mm. Well, you definitely don't look like you have a 23-year-old, yes. 22-year-old. That's and, what they say. He lives yeah. in Vegas. So when we were in Vegas, I think we had got on a bus and the, and he was like, this is for my mom and this is for me using like the car. And the bus driver was like. That's your mom? And he's like, yeah, that's my mom. So I was like, ah, that must mean I look good for 41. Okay. Yeah, I, I, absolutely, because <laughs> I would not have given you. Uh, really? Yeah, no. Yep, 41. Yeah. Just turned in August, 41. Okay, all right. And so relationships, let's talk oh, about Jesus. it. Let's unpack it. Let's mm. let's see where we are. Are we are we single and mingling? Are we available? Are we? We singling. Uh-huh. We single and mingling, I guess. Sing- no, we, just, we single. We single. Single? We single. Okay, yeah. all right. So listen, drawing board. We're not mingling. Not really. mingling. Okay. Just a little bit, but not too much. Not too much. I, I understand. Yeah. Uh, you know, but available. Absolutely. Okay, so listen, <laughs> drawing board nation. If you are looking for you are a very so driven, uh, <laughs> Full of passion and, and fire. One who is oh, getting wow. ready in the next 12 months to launch out into full entrepreneurship. Has a head on straight. Worked in healthcare for over 16 years. Loves people. Loves God. And uh, will definitely keep life exciting. <laughs> Hit up Angelita the coach. <laughs> Stay out of DMs, though. <laughs> Don't be Stay out of DMs. Stop being my yeah. DMs. No, make sure. <laughs> Make sure you post it on her page. Oh, stay Lord, stay mercy. out of the DMs it's, oh, and keep goodness. it respectful. Keep it respectful. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, when we when we think about like uh how important love is to us, right? Mm-hmm. And of course our first our, our love for God, uh which provides us power and stability Absolutely. to live life, right? So uh we think about that and we we live from that place, right? Which means in our personality it can fluctuate up and mm-hmm. down, you know, as we discover who we're becoming, having these real conversations and like being honest with ourselves about what it is that we desire and we want. Mm -hmm. Right. So I had this question in my head when I was thinking about our interview on the way and I was thinking to myself, here's the question. I said, I wonder if we would choose who we chose if we were healed and whole when we met them. That's good. That is good. Because, that is so good. Yeah, because because yeah. my go ahead. The first guy. Yeah. Uh huh. Nah, if I was healed and whole, I definitely wouldn't have chose. <laughs> well, listen, I definitely wouldn't have chose him. Right. Right. <laughs> Not at all. But yeah, that's that is that's an interesting question, and I think that if we are healed from whatever. It is that we definitely would choose different partners. I I think so, and and I say that because um, um, my first real relationship was was it ended up being a domestic violence um, situation. Okay, so that's why I say I know for a fact I definitely was not healed in whole when that relationship uh, came into play. So, yeah. Yeah, and so I see you have the purple, uh, you yes. know, in your hair. I rocked my purple for yeah, domestic violence. For domestic violence, yes, absolutely. I did, I did. And shout out to you know all of the survivors of domestic violence, absolutely. both male, female, and children. Absolutely. Uh, and I just always, and being a person who grew up around domestic violence uh, and knew about it and saw it, and mm-hmm. uh, I want to just share with everybody listening. Um, and I did a podcast. It's almost, uh, what was this? It's close to a year. It might have been a year, maybe a year ago or roughly within the year uh, for domestic violence. And okay. people, some ladies came on and shared their story. But there's always a way out. Like, here's here's what I would like to share is there's always an answer. Uh, sometimes there's a process to getting to that answer. And so I'm not saying that, you know, there are some situations you just can't yank your neck out of that mm-hmm. you can't just leave, like, immediately. 
but there there is help. Uh, what I will do in the comments is post the uh, helpline mm -hmm. and the number so that if you find yourself in that situation or know someone in that situation, uh, you have to do more than just call your cousins to come over there and beat them up uh, because that doesn't it doesn't answer or heal it. Uh, but the question goes back to the main question is, <laughs> dig it, is, and that's with, a, with anything, not just a relationship. Right. If I'm healed and whole, you know, would I make this choice? Mm -hmm. uh, if I'm healed and whole, will I go and spend this money that I know that I should be conserving, saving, and investing? Mm -hmm. and, and so that is something that, you know, we have to ask ourselves, what is it about, um, what is it, what's going on inside of me that I'm, I'm led to this choice or I feel mm -hmm. drawn to this choice? But, mm -hmm. yeah, and so nobody invites that. Uh, nobody... Um, there's nothing about a person that invites that, mm -hmm. uh, but there are some proclivities that we have uh, to be drawn to what's familiar. Mm -hmm. And so, mm -hmm. I would, you know, what what do you have to say about that? You know, I think um, I agree 100%. Um, you know, with everything, it's a process, and like I said, nobody wants to be in that situation, and, and nobody stays in. And and I'm not going to say that situation. I'm going to say. Any situation, because there's a lot of situations and a lot of different choices that you make based on, you know, certain things. But um, there's always a way out of a, si a situation, like you said, but there's a process that has to take place first. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, once the and the. I kind of want to say that the process, the process needs to happen. I mean, it just is what it is. The process needs to happen. And then you learn and you grow from that process. You know, like, you know, what happened, you know, with that situation, other situations, they need it to happen because, you know, the end result is, in, number one, it makes you a better person. Um, you, you look at things differently. And then also, you know, I always say that, you know, well, I've always been told that, you know, your story is, you know, possibly to heal someone, you know. Right. And I think a lot of times that we just hide behind shame with any situation. It doesn't necessarily have to be a domestic violence situation, but I think that we just hide behind the situation because we don't want people to know our business or, you know, we're ashamed. But um, you'll be surprised how many people go through different situations. Like, you're not the only person that go through different situations. Um, but, you know, like I said, it's it's this. you go through the situation, you have to go through that process, but the end result is is that you can take what you went through and you can help somebody else with it. And, again, it doesn't have to be domestic violence. It can be whatever type of situation, you know, that you went through. So Yeah, it becomes a testimony mm -hmm. because, I mean, with the resiliency that you have, you are now today, Angelita is a business coach and strategist, speaker, author, and media personality. Mm -hmm. And like all of that resiliency, all of those experiences, everything you bring to the table, uh, that bounce back is real, mm -hmm. you know? That comeback. That comeback, hey. you know? <laughs> hey, hey, you know? Hey. Uh, so it is one of those things where uh, nothing's wasted, right? Absolutely. Nothing Absolutely. goes wasted. And um, at this time, it's just like understanding that. That's when you can really say, like, for real, for real, that God will take everything and work mm -hmm. it for your good, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, like, one of the things, you know, I always, I would always see myself speaking in front of people. And speaking in front of people used to be, like, the biggest, well, there's still some fear there, but it was, like, the biggest fear. Like, there's no way I'm standing in front of people and I'm talking and, you know, and it's funny because I do it now. Um and, you know, don't, you know, don't get me wrong. I'm still nervous about it. I'm still kind of like, oh, do I want to do this? But I'm able to do it. Like my fear doesn't um, overpower my faith. Any, you know what I'm saying? anymore. So now my faith is overpowering my fear. So as I'm standing up talking to you, even as I'm sitting on this podcast, I'm like, you know, nervous, but my faith overpowers all of that. So, you know, and then when you, I always say when you're scared and you're still kind of scared, that's how you know, okay, you're doing the right thing. Because nothing, um, I don't think anything that you're supposed to do is just going to come easy and natural to you. You know, you got to. You got to feel that fear. It's you got okay. you got to come out yeah. of your comfort zone, yeah. right? Yes. Come yes. out of that comfort you gotta zone. You got to come out your comfort zone. So in the next 12 months, like what what stages would you like to grace? 
Oh, um, I would like to grace stage. Well, I'll say this. I will grace stages. OK. Um, out of the U.S. All right. International. Um, okay. Yes. Yeah, so I will be an international speaker. Um, so I will grace some stages internationally next year as well as just throughout the U.S. I don't have there is not anything like you know, specific that, hey, I want to be on this stage or that stage. Um, hey, maybe I'll even be on the drawing board stage next year. Hey, listen, <laughs> listen, listen, drawing board 2020, the power of vision, okay, see your way see? clear. Um, hey, hey, listen, put comments below if you want to see Angelita, the coach hey. on the drawing board stage. Let's go. <laughs> So, yeah, it's just, I just, it's just stages. And, you know, I have a message. I know I have a message. I know it's powerful um, as it pertains to business, you know, as it pertains to overcoming your fear. Um, I'm, pe I'm speaking on, you know, personal experiences. You know, I'm sharing that. Even when it comes to, you know, fear within business, you know, um, you always going to feel something, but, you know, I'm going to work with you. We're going to work past that. You still going to feel that fear, but we still we're going to do it anyways. We're going to do it scared. Right. You know, I had a lady um, tell me that uh, two years ago, one of my biggest things was I, I had a fear of flying. OK. Um, I just overcame my fear of flying at the age of 40. Let's go. <laughs> So, and I, like, just talking about flying, y'all, would give me just so much anxiety. I would start crying, like, no, I'm not going to get on the plane because I just felt that because I'm on that plane, it's going to crash. Like, that's just how bad the anxiety was. Okay. And um, just talking to her and her husband, you know, talking to her, her husband, a friend of mine, she was like, just do it. Do it scared. Just do it. And so... I got up the the courage and the nerve, and I wanted somebody to fly with me, but for whatever reason, no one could fly with me. So for my 40th birthday, I flew to Los Angeles, California by myself. To L.A. To L.A. Yes. Um, now, I'm trying to fly somewhere, everywhere now. And all my flights, I fly by myself. I've never flown with anybody. Okay. So I fly by myself. I know how to do, like, everything now. And I'm like, and I live, like, right by the airport, like, for the past eight years. So it's kind of like, you know, it's, it's it was like, you know, this journey that God has me on is not meant for me to take others with me. It's meant for me to do this journey by myself. So that's just how I feel. So, like, everything's, like, coming into place you know, it's I'm nervous. I'm I'm scared, but again, when you when you feel like that that little bit of fear, that's how you know. Okay, I'm going in the right direction. I know this is what I'm supposed to be doing. So, like I always tell everybody, follow your passion. Once you follow your passion, you'll find your purpose. Okay, so you feel like passion and purpose are inextricably yeah, connected. Okay, yeah, it's connected because right. you're not gonna you, you're not gonna. I honestly think that you're not gonna be so. Um, so quick to do something that you're not really feeling, you know. So I think that, you know, when you're passionate about something, you know, you'll find your purpose. That's true. So when you talk about passion and business, do you talk to your clients about, like, burnout when they when they feel like a, uh, within business and you just feel exasperated? You, you know, you're tired. You still have the desire for it, but you reach mm -hmm. this point where it's just like, you got a, you're at a, a fork, fork in the road, and you're like, man, should I just, you know, return back, or should I press forward, or like, how do you, how would you coach someone through that? What would be your advice to them? You know, well, see, as I'm coaching you, I don't really tell you, I don't really give you advice. So what I do is I ask you, I ask questions. Okay. And it just depends. Like there's there's certain questions that I ask you, but the end result of me asking you these questions is for you to give yourself the answer. So the answer comes from within you. Um, so that's why that's how I coach people. But um, I'm going to tell you, don't stop. Or, you know, obviously that, that my advice to you is always, you know, move forward. And then here's why I think you should move forward. And then, you know, you're answering that with me. You're like, oh, OK, that makes sense. So, you know, I let you kind of think about it and then you pull it out. Like, why, why would you stop? You're right here, you know. Why give up? You've come this far. You used to be here. Now you're here. Keep keep going. Because there's days where I'm like, man, I don't, I don't, I don't think I'm going to do this no more. You know? And we have those moments. Everybody has those moments. Everybody like, does. nobody can say, oh, no, I've never had that moment. No, everybody has that moment. But you have to keep, you have to keep pushing. Because you know, 
you know when it's something that you're supposed to be doing, like you get this feeling, you know, I can't explain it, but you get this feeling and you know, okay, I'm on the right track. This is what I need to, to do. I know it's hard, but this is my, this is the journey and I have to keep pushing forward. You know, the end result is, is always, it's going to benefit you, but the end result is that you're also helping somebody else. Okay. So let's put these coaching skills to the test. All right. I'm going to oh, give you Jesus. my scenario. Here we go. Oh. Live and in living color. All right. So, I am a dean of culture and climate by day, which means that I'm impacting children and families every single day with the decisions that I'm making, right? Okay. Uh, my ultimate dream is to travel the world uh, speaking the word of faith uh, through the form of the drawing board, okay. as well as so from ministerial pulpits to having conferences, to be invited to conferences, all impacting families, A, helping them to overcome, reimagine the possibility, tap into their God-given potential, and don't let any obstacles speak to them beyond what God has already placed in them, right? So the message of the drawing board is going international. I have the book. We have the podcast. We got the conference. I'm speaking. Like tomorrow I'm speaking at Trine University okay. to freshmen uh, of the class of 2019-2020. I have tons of opportunities I could be pursuing, but what I'm looking at now is right now the speaking it w is not producing enough money than the nine to five is, right? Mm -hmm. And so I know wholeheartedly that I have what it takes to go ahead and launch out there. What do you, what, what, go ahead and ask these questions. Let's, <laughs> let's see what we got going. Oh my goodness, you can't, you know. You, oh, she's on, the, <laughs> she on the spot, people. She normally would have time to prepare. Uh, I, I would do, have filled I do, out a, right? I would have yeah. filled out a questionnaire. She would have the chance to see what my okay, passions are. So obviously yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna do what you did to me. My first question is yes. where do you see yourself in a certain amount of time? Okay. okay. How much time? Um it, where do you see yourself in six months? Oh, six months. Six okay, months. listen. So I'm looking to have at least three to four speaking engagements a month, paid speaking engagements. Okay. Uh, I do want to keep some pro bono work on the table uh, for organizations that are just starting. Uh, but for organizations that have a budget, uh, my expectation is for them to do the best of their budget uh, for speaking because I'm going to always give them my best. Okay. So uh, plus got the history uh, okay. to be able to do it. So in six months. So what are you going to do yeah. to get those speaking engagements? Oh, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm making phone calls. I'm tapping into my other connections uh, locally in the city, also in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Who are you making phone calls to? Oh, you want to need to know who it is? Yeah. All right, so Head Start Organizations, if you see me, holler at me, let's go. Uh, I'll be tapping into, I'm going to call the United Way, I'm going to call Skillman Foundation, I'm going to call other. So when you call these people, what are you going to say? Oh, absolutely, I'm going to feel the need. I ask the organization, what's your greatest need? And generally their greatest need is motivating their staff or their students or uh, whatever their constituency is of, of who they serve. So it would be about me coming in and inspiring, motivating, and helping them to transform. My goal is to get you to the point of the decision and to support you. Now that's when Ebron and Associates comes where we consult, develop, and support personal, professional, organizational transformation. So we'll be there, A, to motivate you to the point of transformation, and then to support you through the process. Mm -hmm. You don't need me. <laughs> no, but what I'm saying, yeah, what, what, like, yeah, like, yeah. no. But, what I'm saying is, but for somebody yeah. who, but for somebody who would need me, they they're not going to tell me that. You know what I'm saying? They're not. They have a plan, but they're like, ah, who do I need to talk to? How am I going to get from point A to point B? So like, those are that's where all the questions would come from that I would ask because generally you you know what you're trying to do, so. Oh, you yeah. can answer all those questions. But the people that I work with, you might know but might not know how to get there. So you might not think, oh, okay, I need to call this person or I need to talk to this person or these are the people that I need to connect with. So it's basically the dots that you have, I kind of help you connect them. Okay. To, you know, draw the lines and connect those dots to the people. You have it, it's just putting it together. Yeah, and so for me, it's just like a matter of time. Mm -hmm. So I have presently more opportunities than I do time. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, I can't, you know, I have to tend to. Do you to, have an assistant? No, I don't. You need and, an assistant. And so here's, here's the thing about that, though. So it's about a budget, right? <laughs> but here's the thing, though. It is about a budget. Yes. But the thing of it is, is that if you get an assistant, this assistant is going to uh, allow you time to do that so that the money will come in because your assistant now is doing the work. So you say, hey, I don't have the money to pay the assistant, but then you also only have a limited of time 
for you to work with to do all of this. You see what I'm saying? So it's um, binding you to a certain amount of time. Absolutely. To where if you have an assistant, she's going to take some of that off of you okay. to where you can go out and probably get more speaking engagements, that's do right. more things. That's right. So if you have an assistant that's over here doing some of that legwork for you while you're out there speaking and you're speaking more, then that's where your in- the income is going to come in and then you can pay your assistant. Yeah. So listen, this is to all PR agencies out there, consulting agencies. And I understand how some of you all work, so I'm listening. And um, there's generally, and, and I don't understand why, uh, but sometimes they'll require a certain, you, you obligate yourself to a certain monthly payment and then they work on getting certain gigs for you, right? Mm-hmm. Where I would love to work out and negotiate a percentage piece where if you were able to get these gigs, then a certain percent percentage of what's being paid can automatically be given to certain agencies. So if you're listening and you have the arm reach to be able to do that, Angelita, the coach, and I, because Angelita's going international stages coming Absolutely. this next year. Uh, she has a powerful message. And uh, you know about the drawing board. That's why you tuned in. Hey, <laughs> hey. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, I think it's just about opening, you know, eyes to the possibilities, right? Mm-hmm. And then developing a plan uh, to stay consistent. Yes, uh, you have to stay consistent. Stay consistent. And so that's why, I, that's Giannis, that's the real reason why I'm on Instagram it's the real reason why I'm on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Most of the stuff that I'm posting is inspirational, motivational, mm-hmm. or something about my family, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, so, I mean, I am. Uh, what about people who were just, like, uh, thrusted into entrepreneurship due to, like, loss of a job or something? What would you tell them? Ooh. Yeah. Well, uh-huh. because it's totally different. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You know, you're used to your 9 to 5, you know, that's that's different. To where you being an entrepreneur, you gotta you gotta get out there and you gotta depending on what it is that you're doing, you gotta get all your clients. Like the the stuff is not there for you. Just don't give up. Stay consistent. You know, find somebody who um, connect with people. Depending on the field that you want to be in, connect with somebody who's in that field. You know, already that you might know that can kind of give you like tips and pointers. Um, you know, do your research with everything. Do your research. Um, stay consistent, learn all that you can learn about your industry in the midst of, you know, trying to go hard and grind, um, and make money because, you know, you don't have a job. So, um, being an entrepreneur doesn't mean that you're going to make money within that, you know, as soon as you start, you know, it's a process to it. So please it's kind of like. Please say that again. <laughs> please, please say that again. Being Let's, an entrepreneur does not mean as soon as you start being an entrepreneur that you're going to make money. So, I mean, my thing is for somebody who just lost their job and they're like, hey, I'm a, I'm going to go into being an entrepreneur. I hope you got maybe some some some, savings. Mo- some money, you know, <laughs> right. because I mean, you can run your you can literally run your business and start a business and literally work that business for a year and you're not getting paid. You're not paying yourself, you know. Um so just because I'm a business coach or, you know, because I do speaking or whatever the case may be, yeah, I have these titles. I do these things, but That doesn't mean that I have, you know, that we that do this has residual income coming in from that. You know, it's a process, you know, Um, being an entrepreneur, you can make money like the first six months in business. And then the last six months, guess what? You don't have no income coming in, you know, so it's a process. It does not. So if you're not if you don't have the patience and if you don't want to do the work, I don't recommend somebody saying, hey, I'm going to be an entrepreneur because. It's not what you think it is. It's not like, oh, I'm Angelita the coach and, you know, I make six figures. No, it's a process. I don't make six figures yet. Yes. Put the yet on there. Yet. Okay. You know, but again, it's a process. So I might be making six figures next year. You just never know. But I have to stay consistent in what I'm doing. You have to constantly, that's again, like you say, you see me on social media, you see me on Facebook, you see me on Instagram. Um, 
you see me on, you know, being a guest on podcasts. You see me on my own podcast. Right. Like, you know, this is um, a way for people to get to know you. And, you know, and people, you know, they feel like, okay, I know a little bit about him or I know a little bit about her. So, you know, it allows people to kind of, you know, get familiar with you. I mean, I have been out and people be like, I know you. You're my Facebook friend. You know, I've even done that, you know, too. Right, so, right. um yeah, it's be, entrepreneur is entrepreneurship is not a get rich quick scheme. It's gonna take you some time. Absolutely, and you you started your first business in two thousand and five. Two thousand and five. So talk to me about that. Now we're going on fourteen years. It'll be fifteen years since you started your first business. I don't have that business anymore. Okay. Um. <laughs> 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 you sound like you said that with great relief. <laughs> I don't have that business anymore. Um, that, yeah, I was an event planner. Okay. Yes, I was an event planner. I can picture that. You know, I has, I, I got some dope skills I, as an event planner. Like, I bet you do. Yeah, I yeah. have some really, really dope skills, but I downplay myself, mm. you know, so it would be like, well, how much for this? And I'd be like, you know, like I was scared to say my prices. Tell people what it costs. Yeah, I was right. scared to, to say my prices so so that I wouldn't lose customers. I would downplay myself and I would, you know, say, you know, if I say I'm charging you 300 for this, I'd be like, oh, you, I do it for 150. You know, it just really wasn't. I treated it more like a hobby. Okay. More than anything else. Um, and so, you know, I doubted myself and, you know, it just it just wasn't for me. It wasn't it's not what I was supposed to be doing. Now, you ask me about my prices right now. Yeah, right. Oh, my prices right. is my prices and I'm not going down. <laughs> OK, I <laughs> I'm understand. not going down for nobody. But um, it was just, you know, I wanted networking has always kind of like been my my thing. OK. And so when I started event planning, um, I, it was a lot of networking that I used to do, but then I wanted to go over and do like um, like uh, social events for like anniversaries, birthday parties, weddings, things that I really that wasn't my that wasn't my ministry. Okay, okay. and it definitely showed that that wasn't my ministry. Okay, so we kind of had to do like a full circle and come all the way back around, which is where I am right now, okay, which is working with businesses and entrepreneurs. Like this, like what I'm doing right now, that's my ministry. So that was kind of like a hobby. It wasn't what I was supposed to be doing. But in my mind, it was – my plan was good enough. I thought my plan mm -hmm. was the way that it was supposed to go. Right. So – but you will quickly find out that your plan is not God's plan. So when God's plan, when God says do this and you go and you do something else, nine times out of ten it don't work out for you. So we had to get it together and we had to, okay, we're going to do God's plan. We're going to go this way. So, Okay, so here's, the, here's an invitation that i like to give you as well. So I'm writing a book about entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. It's called That Day. Mm -hmm. All right. And so I would love to get your story uh, to be a part of that book Look at you. about your story uh, about entrepreneurship and how you came to become an entrepreneur and uh, your journey as an entrepreneur. Right. And then, um, you know, we're going to have to definitely see see what we can do about this coaching piece. Who knows? Who you know, knows? who knows? And you're talking about the drawing board 2020. I know. In the I building. might be on the stage. And hey, Look, no, I am going to be on the stage. You see, you have to like, you got to speak life into yourself. Speak it. You can't say, oh, this is what I want to do. No, you got to say, no, this is what I am going to do. Speak it in the so, affirmative. You know, right. like, I think I'm kind of like putting them on the spot a little bit, y'all, but I'm going to be speaking at the drawing board 2020. So listen, <laughs> so listen, comment below, <laughs> shout it out. But Miss Angelita, listen, where can they find you? What your social media handles? Social media. So Facebook and Instagram, you can find me at Angelita the Coach. And then my website is www.coachangelita.com. Okay, so we have approximately five minutes left. Mm -hmm. And I did this last week and I, I it shocked me. I just said I'll take a risk, right? So now you have five minutes. Uh, to ask me any question that you want to ask me. So I've been asking you questions. You five minutes to ask you Five any minutes, yes. So, will I get to ask you all these questions? You will. You'll get to ask me. <laughs> so listen, I'll be on Angelita's show, Real Talk with Angelita the Coach, 
Uh, next week, make sure you tune in yes. from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. I'll be on there. We'll be talking about business. We'll yes, yes. be talking about a lot of fun things. It'll be real talk. I'm telling you, get the full unadulterated. No, it's not. Good. <laughs> but it's, it's, listen, it's going to be a lot of fun. And um, so, yeah, well, I guess you'll ask me those co- those ask questions you, then. But one of the things I will ask you this. So what led you to draw to write the book, The Drawing Board? So uh, in a nutshell, I was the person forced into entrepreneurship because I lost the job. Right. Okay. And uh, I did every I had all of my talents that I thought could make money. I took it like spaghetti and threw it against the wall. And so I had to go back to the drawing board, back to the drawing mm-hmm. board. And every time I would do something, then I had something going really well that I thought was going to produce a lot of money, had a lot of promise and got into a bad partnership. And then all the money was gone again. Mm-hmm. So I had to go back to the drawing board. And so like what kept me going is. You know, I've been working since I was 13, 12. Th- well, before then, I was raking leaves, shuffling snow and pa- newspaper routes, magazines, all that kind of stuff before I was 13. And when I was 13, I approached uh, this lady who owned a soul food restaurant called Simone's in Fort Wayne, Indiana. It's no longer there, but shout out. And I walked up to her and I said, do you uh, and this is what I asked her. I said, uh, could I work for your restaurant? And knowing that you had to have a uh, work permit, I didn't. I'm too young. Mm-hmm. I said, and you pay me under the table. No, I did. I asked. And she said, well, as long as it is okay with your mother. Uh, And so I've been working, always looking for different possibilities or ways. And like in all of my relationships and things that I do, I always believe that there's greater. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that keeps me to going to the drawing board. It keeps me creative uh, amongst great challenges. Uh, When I've almost, you know, my wife almost passed when she gave birth to my son. And uh, Mm -hmm. just knowing that, like, you have to reimagine life for where you currently are. Uh, you can look at the challenge and just like amplify that. Mm-hmm. I'm always looking at the possibility. So when that lady pointed in my face and said, your wife could die any day, she was bold enough to point in my face. I pointed back in her face and say, I don't receive that. Right. right, right. And so I went back to the drawing board. Mm-hmm. God is a healer. He delivered. He set free. Uh, we're providing the best education. And so like all of that prompted me to say, you know what? Let me let people know that you can always go back to the drawing board. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that is the drawing board. Nice. See? Yeah. I'm going to ask you the same question next week. Oh, yeah. It's, and listen, and I'll have, and it'll be, I'll have more time to <laughs> right, explain. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yes. And I so, love that. I so love that. So I want to share something uh, in the last and closing minutes. Um, a lot of people talk about when they think about ministry, because you talked about ministry, they think about the ecclesiastical piece of, or ecclesia, uh, the ministry that takes place uh, as far as conveying the word of truth or faith by preaching right Mm -hmm. but very few people talk about the kingly anointing of which jesus christ also possessed meaning that in him and you see it in some old testament references that he was both king and priest which means that kingly anointing allows you to operate within the marketplace letting your light so shine that men might see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven right so it takes just as much anointing it takes just as much Mm -hmm. power it takes just as much grace to be able to carry his message in and through mm-hmm. business. Mm-hmm. And that's why you have to have a spirit of excellence. Mm-hmm. Uh, someone told me, I was interviewing them for the book, he said, you cannot, um, you cannot discount and free trial your way to success. Mm-hmm. That is not, that's not God's way. Mm-hmm. You have a gift that's going to bring you before great men. Yeah. And you have to believe in what God has placed in you because mm-hmm. it took just as much of Jesus' ministry to birth that marketplace kingdom anointing that it did for salvation and the preaching of the gospel. Mm-hmm. And for those who disagree with me, listen, we can sit down with the word and reason through the Bible scriptures. Bible and business. You got to hey. have the Bible and business. Boom. You got to have it. You got to understand Jesus was a carpenter. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? My grandfather was a carpenter. Let's go. Okay. So, I mean, yeah, you got to bring, you got to have the Bible and you got to bring it into business. It, it, they go together. They <laughs> like, they go together. It's like the fivefold ministry. It yeah. goes together. So, yeah. Absolutely. So, listen, <laughs> Angelita, it has been <laughs> such an honor to have you on. Uh, next week we're gonna turn up again yeah. and have a lot of fun. Yes, yes, yes. And we uh, got Tanisha coming in with. Oh us, yeah, so. Tanisha. Yes. Yeah. So to, it is written. Yes, Let's so go. So it is written. It's gonna be joining us, and it's gonna be you. And so that's why I was like, oh, when you told me the date, I was like, oh, this is gonna be good. I'm gonna have both of them together. So yeah. So I'm looking forward to interviewing both of you guys and having you on the show. So yeah, it's gonna be fun. Awesome. Fun. So. If you've listened to the interview, some of the things you can take away is that you got to come out of your comfort zone. Uh, You have to be able to face your fears and be scared anyway. 
and do it. You know, that's called that's called courage. Yes. And then at the end of the day, after you have come out of your comfort zone, been courageous enough to take action, you must be consistent. You hear them three C's. See, that's a, a preacher for you. Pull them three C's out. <laughs> come out of your comfort zone. Be courageous and be consistent. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow, God bless you. <laughs> Listen, this is the Drawing Board Podcast, where we talk about family, relationship, ministry, community, and career. And as I always say, your future is not behind you. It is not before you. It is within you. And it's just a matter of time. God bless you.